What up, family? CTR Media Network. Yeah. Uh. Best in the biz. Yeah. Join the team. CTR is who we are, the media network, that's the best by far, whether you listen at your home, at your job, in your car, come get the information that's needed above all, never lasting, motivational podcasting, giving you the answers to the questions that you asking, serious talks and topics, how to come up and profit, how to better yourself, your health is here, we got it, reaching 350 million, hey, tuning in, we in 50 different countries, we all can, and like-minded, find your purpose and your assignment, come get your fix, your feel, your your mental alignment, uh, get active uh, and speak to the masses, build your influence, all levels and all classes, now you know you can monetize and grow, CTR Media Network, start the show. Hello, hello, everybody. I am Dr. Tina J. Ramsey, the host of the Tina Ramsey Show, powered by CTR Media Network. And today we have another incredible guest to introduce you to. He is absolutely amazing. So when you think of these four words, talented, visionary, creative, inspiring. These are the words that describes today's guest, the amazing Neil Neil Hamilton. He is an award-winning illustrator. He's former Rock and Roll Hall of Fame photographer and the CEO of Paint Out Loud LLC. You can find him on all social media platforms and he has a unique way of bringing to life art and making you feel what's going on through the power of music and art. He merged it together. So without further ado, let's bring on our amazing featured guest, Neil Hamilton. Welcome to the show. Hey, Tina, how are you, baby? I am doing absolutely amazing. I am so happy to have you on the show today, speaking all about two things that I love, music and art. So all right. let's go. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get right into it. When, and matter of fact, let's just bring in what you have behind you. That's some well, of your work. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. My uh, a rendition of Ray Charles. Because when I started this series, um, probably about 16 years ago, I wondered, the hardest part is, who am I going to start painting, right? And I figured, you know, being in the, in the business for so many years, it's like, let me start with those iconic figures, the ones that the world knows, right? I mean, I could pick my favorites, maybe some people get it, but Ray Charles, everybody gets it, right? So I had to do Ray. So I see it was, it was an experimental at the time. I, I created a, a style of painting that I just have never done before. And it actually came from actually the loss of my home in a fire. Because I was working for the Rock Hall at the time, you know, doing great, making money and enjoying being a photographer. But after the fire, I had lost so many of my materials and supplies. And when I was in another house, you know, waiting for insurance to fix the house, the spirit just said, start painting again. But I didn't have any supplies. So I'm like, how am I going to paint when I don't have the stuff, the brushes and all that? And I looked around and I picked up anything I could just find laying around, house paint razor blades, sponges, putty knives, and I created these pieces of artwork with junk, actually. Wow, really? Yes, <laughs> you know what, that is absolutely amazing. So you're showing that you can use what you have in order to create masterpieces. And when we think, and, and that's the perfect slogan for reuse and recycle, if I am not right. mind, because you took what you had and you made it work. And like you said, through art, uh, we connect with a lot of different emotions, a lot of different feelings, happy times, right. not great times. But you decided to also use art in a way to help us reconnect with iconic people that we already know. So yeah. as you think about your illustrations, what is the passion behind it? And I know that you're, I look at some of your work, like, for example, you have... Um, the iconic Tina Turner, like, and then you have Prince, of course. What moves you to paint the art that type of way? Because when I look at this as a person, 
uh, that love art. I call myself an art thespian. <laughs> okay. okay, I see a lot going on. I see you talking to me as a person, as a person that actually loves Prince music, but also I see you teaching through this art. I see his symbol when he started, when he named himself, uh, the, he changed his name when he wasn't Prince anymore. I see the feeling in his face, the colors that you, tr that you incorporated in this painting. So what were you feeling when you created this piece about him? Well, actually, I was trying to actually put a lot of philosophy in these pieces. The coloring made me think of, I wanted to paint these iconic people, but it wasn't going to be a color. It wasn't going to be white folks, black folks, Asian folks. I said, let me transcend that and paint this out of orange colors. That way nobody can start off with, oh yeah, that's a black artist, that's a white artist. So I want to erase that, 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 you know, that theory right there. Then also, I play the music of the artist when I'm creating. So when I'm in the studio, that's all I'm gonna play the entire time I'm working on the poetry. So I want that soul of that artist to actually come through me, through my hands, into that brush, into that paint, onto that canvas, Tina. Mm. So, so once again, each piece is very special to me. Because like I said, I'm dancing around the studio. I'm having a good time. I'm playing Prince for real, right? So I, and, I'm re and, and, when I'm, and when I'm not painting, I'm reading about him. I'm, you know, I'm pulling up magazines. I'm researching. So I want to get everything, all the information I can get into myself as I can when I'm painting. So when I'm painting, I'm actually putting everything I got into that painting. You know what? It was something different and moving when I look at your art because I love art, but each artist has a different way of expressing oneself. Right. And to hear how you connect rock and roll, you connect the jazz, you connect the feeling and you transcend it not being color. Right. And I can see that in your art and the fact that you immerse yourself with the artist's music and about their life as you're painting, that's why your your strokes are so profound. Because I'm looking, I'm like, his. I have seen a lot of paintings with Tina Turner, Prince, Ray Charles, but yours speak to me in a different way, as if you're telling a story, and that's very hard to do. And the fact that now I did not know that you was using things, you were repurposing and reusing things, so right. that makes more powerful because that's not easy to do with regular people. No, no. <laughs> Just like we laugh today, you know, I, could, I, t I laugh with some of the young people. I say, you know, if the electricity went out, you'd be in trouble because you're on computers, yes. right? Creating the work. Um, we can put up a, a candle and keep going, okay? Mm -hmm. So once again, like I said, a lot of people don't realize it's even harder what I'm doing because it wasn't with traditional materials. You know, when you got traditional, the beaut the good, paint from out the art store and the best paint brushes and all the good stuff, things are a little easier. But when you didn't have, when I didn't have that, this was a lot harder to do. A lot of people don't realize that these, these paintings were created with nothing that's normal to most artists. That That's very true. And when I think about that you're an artist, but you're also the CEO of Paint Out Loud LLC. So what are your goals and your aspirations for this company? Why did you decide? Because there are many artists, but sure. it's not many artists that start a business. So what made you decide <laughs> to do the art and then also add that other layer to start your business? And who, do, who are you trying to um, inspire and help? Well, basically, it was like a no brainer. After I spent the 10 years, you know, 10 years staying with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, being the chief photographer, working with all these artists in real time, it made perfect sense to me that, OK, OK, that that chapter is over. So what am I going to do with my art? So I couldn't think of anything else. It was pretty, like I said, a no brainer. It's like, let's start painting the people I used to work with work for, the management. There's so many people involved. There's so many, what I call six degrees of separation in music, right? And once people start to do a little more research on it, you'd be surprised on how many people are connected. This artist is connected to that artist and that artist is connected to that artist and that writer is connected to that person and they all work together. And a lot of people don't know that. So it was, it, it, it was, it was so much, 
fun and it was so easy to paint these pieces because they actually, first of all, it's the passion behind it. I had the passion for it. It made me feel good because I just stepped down from all that energy and all that excitement, right? I don't want to paint landscapes, not putting landscapes down, but that just wasn't for me, right? <laughs> so <laughs> doing, yeah, doing the music people, you know, made me feel so good, made me feel like I was still there doing that in real time with those people. Mm. And I love the way that you decided to incorporate, because like you said before, you're a former photographer for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And this was actually another way that you could still keep that going right. through your art and keeping, in essence, you're building your legacy, but you're continuing their legacy through right. your art. So it's like a win-win situation. That's right. That's right. <laughs> because right, that's so because Tina, because we actually debuted actually at the Rock Hall. I mean, I kind of shocked even all my co-workers because they they did not know I was an artist. They thought, okay, you're the photographer, okay. But a lot of people did not know my art career goes way before photography, okay. The photography was a secondary. So when we, the lady Ruthie Brown, who said, you know, I got an event happening this weekend, and you know, a cultural event that weekend, she goes, let's put your pieces up in the main lobby of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and see what happens, and. I mean, people came in and they just could not stop taking pictures, you know, posing by all the pieces because we had easels lined up all around, the, you know, around the main lobby. And, and it was just a beautiful day, actually. And I said, OK, we're on to something here. We got to keep this going. OK, I love it. I love it. So let me give some um, attention to our live studio audience. We have Sheila Hill in the building. She says, great art. Yes, it is. And you got <laughs> more um and we're going to tell you a little bit later in the show how you can actually look at some more of his art and um maybe he has some pieces for you to purchase we also have um norbert brown from well he over there on linkedin so he said good evening i love what you're doing i am the award-winning writer director producer you gave yourself a shameless plug i respect that <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the show. So what we're going to do right now, Neil, we're going to take a small com commercial break from our sponsors sure. and we'll be right back. And we're going to discuss more about your journey as an artist, a photographer. And some people may not even know that you have roots in music. Mm. Okay. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more after we come back from these commercial breaks. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, man, the Pete. Go to kkmd.com and purchase my book. Listen, if anybody's interested in getting into podcasting, grab this book. Go on Amazon, grab this book. It, it goes with me almost everywhere. This book has like a workbook. It has places you can fill it in. It tells you how to monetize your podcast. It tells you how to set it up. It tells you about sponsorships. It even, listen, go on Amazon and get this book. And this is the Bible for podcasters. Listen, it was ranked number one. For in podcasting books, look right here. Best new podcasting book by Book Authority. Right there. Boom. And a little secret. Y'all, when you grab this book, I think it's page 43. There is a code on there. Listen, you can get access to her, her class, her, her course. Get her course. It's worth hundreds of dollars. But this book is only, it's less than $50. <laughs> Grab this book on Amazon. I'm telling you, I carry it everywhere. She is the best. Grab this book on Amazon. And just like that, we are back. But I come along with a friend whom you might ask, the amazing uh, Neil Hamilton. And we was talking about his art. So let's bring him back on to the show. CEO of Paint Out Loud. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So... We before the commercial break, we were speaking about how you do your art and how you do it in a revolutionary way in regards to it wasn't the easy way out. You no. didn't have the fancy brushes and all of this when you mm -hmm. started back over and you actually repurposed and reused materials to create these masterpieces. And so 
how do you hope that your art would inspire and emp and empower um, maybe the next generation? Because you know, right now we're in this digital age, but I feel that true art can never be digitized. So how do you feel about it? No, I feel very strongly about it. First of all, we have this conversation all the time with you know people of all ages and different generations. And the one thing I, I want to stress more than anything is that these artists were the trailblazers. These were the original trailblazers. Even though we're in a rap age now and 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 something new will probably come behind this soon, you know, but we have to go back to that that the, the roots of all this beautiful music. And there is so much to pull from, right? I mean, I will never be able to paint all the paintings I want to do in my mind, right? Because there's just so many great artists. But every time I put I actually finished, when I actually put my signature on that painting, and it's actually done, and I step back and look at it, and the people that visit, you know, me sometimes when I'm working on there, they're, they're, they're trying to take it from me before I even finish it, right? Because I can tell they feel something, you know, if the work didn't have the soul in it or whatever, you know, I can see people say, yeah, okay, that's good work, but ah, whatever. But they're drawn to it, and I see it all the time when people, you know, visit my home or whatever, they go, those portraits are talking to me. They are literally looking through my soul or something like that. Then when they say that, that makes me feel like I've done what I'm supposed to do as an artist, right? So then I say, you know what? I was questioning, do I need to keep doing this? And then all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? I do. Because to my, I think my last day on earth, I'm going to be doing this because I know how important it is. Because long after I'm gone, this stays forever, okay? And people who have my work, purchase my work, commission my work. I think they're going to be very happy to say, I got a piece of Neil Hamilton when he was, you know, in this time, right? And I get so excited when I see young people walking around and they actually got these, these icons on their t-shirts or whatever they do. That makes me feel really good. I know. And to see your work going full circle, to be able to take your thought, to put it on canvas and then exude the emotion behind it and then have other people who don't know you get it. That's powerful. That yeah, is very powerful. Yeah, yeah, Boosie Collins, you know, from the Funkadelics, you know, we're good friends. He has, he's like one of the first collectors of mine. So if you went to the, you know, Boosie's places, you know, the recording studios, he has my artwork all around the whole room, right? And he wrote about me on, on Instagram. I mean, on, yeah, no, I think I'm LinkedIn once. He said, Neil Hamblin is the artist that can still bring life to a flat surface. <laughs> That and I thought that was, pretty, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And that's true because, like I said, I call my little self uh, an art thespian because I just love art and if, and art that moving, that tells a story. Right. And when I look at your art, I can see that it tells a story because of your choice of color and how you make the light shine in certain parts and the shadows in certain parts. That takes innovativeness for, uh, for you to be able to capture a thought put it on canvas and then have people feel an emotion. Cause right. like right now you're looking at Ray Charles, right? And that you just painted on the wall. I mean, just looking at it make me happy. Like, <laughs> I <just> smile. <laughs> and I Thank can you. hear him in, in my head. I can hear him. Like it just, it just, it just moved me in so many different ways. So the fact that you have that talent, that gift, and then you're using it in the right way to make a positive impact, that is to be commended. And so when I think about you working on um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a photographer, what are some of the most memorable things that you that took place? Because I know you used, you was a photographer, well, you still, once a photographer, always a photographer. Let me just say that. <laughs> my husband is a photographer. So once you're that, you're, that's what you are. Sure, yeah. But, not too often know our photographer is a artist. So that is different. <laughs> that is very different. So can you tell us about any anything that you can remember from that era when you was doing that, that stood out, made you laugh, or that encouraged you to move on? Because many times when we have these gifts like you, it's not always easy. No, so no. What was it that allowed you to say, okay, it motivate you to say, hey, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep doing my photography. I'm going to keep doing my art. Basically, like I said, there's so many things I could pull from. I almost can't remember. There's too many things, okay? Because like I said, I got to work with everybody. But when I get interviewed, I usually remember this one story. 
It was a night when we were we were um, filming. Little Richard came in to play live at the Rock Hall. I mean, Little Richard, right? That's a major icon, right? Major, right? And he, that guy, would keep you in stitches all night because he's just that funny. Okay, so he's on the stage one night, ten piece band, right? I mean, they're blazing, they're having a ball, right? And I'm down front, you know, I'm there to be seen but not be seen, right? And to take pictures and not interfere with the show. And as I was photographing, Little Richard kept looking over at me while he's playing the piano. He's looking at me and I'm getting nervous now. Right. Because I'm thinking he's about to do something crazy and I'm, I'm going to be the I'm going to be the fall guy. Right. So uh -huh. I, I keep shooting. I'm like, OK, leave me alone. Keep just keep going. And he's playing. Then he starts looking at me again. Then all of a sudden he just stops right in the middle of the song. Yes. Yeah, see. See how your face changed? Same thing happened to me. My heart stopped because I think now the audience is going to look at me like I did something crazy. Why did he stop the show? He looks at me and says, what kind of camera is that? <laughs> and then I said, right. And I was one of some of the, one of the first people actually using uh, you know, digital photography. I brought digital photography to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I told him, OK, I'm using a Canon, this kind of camera, this kind of camera. He says, OK. Then he starts playing again, right? And then all of a sudden he's playing and playing. The audience is still kind of confused because they don't know what just happened. So, but he's playing again. Then all of a sudden he stops again. I'm like, okay, now I'm busted, right? I'm in trouble. This is not going to work well. He looked at me again and he says, make sure you get my good side and blaze right back into the song. It was one of those perfect moments, Tina. So that's when I really remember. I was so scared because I thought I was going to be in, you know, a lot of trouble, right? Yeah. And, and that evening when I went back to his hotel, a few of us were invited back to his hotel when he, you know, took a shower, cleaned up, and he, and he came out. And it was the biggest thing to me. I learned the biggest lesson because we all know Little Richard for what Little Richard we've always seen, right? Yeah. But after he came out of the shower, Tina, he had a robe on. He looked like he was a regular guy. And I went, I, yeah, he was a normal person. So I walked up and said, Richard, wait a minute, what, what happened? You're not the person that we always see you on stage with all the glitz, glam and all. He looked at me and said, Neil, come here. I got close. <laughs> he said, this is show business. And, uh. and that was one of those moments that, that taught me so much. He said, this is show business, Neil. And the same thing that we're all in in this business. This is show business, okay? We entertain people, okay? Musicians entertain people. People have to feel good about music, right? And the next best thing to music is art. They, they, they work in tandem, I believe, you know? And if you can have a part of both, I mean, some people don't have one or one or the other, but if you can be in both worlds, and I, that, I think that's what made me even more, more energized by what I do because I was able to be in both worlds at the same time. You're right, because they are closely intertwined yes. and photography play a big role in elevation and positioning the artist. Yes. They can have good photos or they can have not so great photos. Right. And so the fact that, I mean, literally, I didn't even realize I was going to do that face. I mean, but when you described it, I was like, oh. Yeah, like, I was, yeah, I was worried. <laughs> He was just messing with me. That's what he does. You know, he just messes with people. It was funny. Yeah. But the fact that you and I heard something that you just said that I thought was incredible. And I want to also give you your flowers right now when you said that you was the first person to bring in digital. And for those of you who are not familiar with that, could you explain what that actually meant? Because Lula Richie clearly recognized that that was a different type of camera. You was working on some different, like, clearly for him to stop. So could you explain to um, our um, audience what that difference was with the camera that you was using? But what happened, I mean, back in the, um, this was during probably the early, mid, mid 90s because the Rock Hall opened in 96. So 96, mm -hmm. 97, the technology was trying to get digital working but it really wasn't there yet. Nobody really had a dependable camera at the time. So I was kind of watching, watching what the can, you know, the camera people doing. I was like, okay, they're gonna get this right pretty soon, but they don't have it just yet. So I had like one of the best film cameras at the time, you know, my Canon EOS, you know, N1 RS was the top camera at the time. So I was pretty happy about that, but I knew it was gonna change. So Nikon came out with this little hand camera that was probably taking the best digital, photography at the time. So I grabbed that camera and I, and I tried to prove to the staff and people there, I said, this is where photography is going. 
film is going to be, it's just going to be outdated and it's going to be obsolete in, in 10 minutes. Okay. Nobody really wanted to believe it at first. They thought, oh, no, 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 film's good. Yeah, it ain't going to change. I said, it's going to change. So I just went ahead, you know, I just spent my own money. I bought the first like Apple titanium laptop when it first came out. I, I had, to, yeah, I, I had one the first one. I still got it at home in the shelf somewhere. Got a little dust on it, but I still got it. And, um, but then I said, they, the Canon finally caught up to where I wanted to be to have an SLR, you know, digital camera. I said, oh, let me be the first one in line buying one, right? And things, they weren't cheap now. Back then, it was a big price tag on those cameras because they just didn't have it right. So you had to pay a lot for it. So after I got that and proved that we can actually shoot a live show and actually download that information into a laptop and get that over to Rolling Stone magazine or whatever magazine instantaneously, they, people were blown away. They, they, it just changed the whole game, changed the whole game. And what I used to do, too, I always tried to stay ahead of the curve. We would I would have partners work with me and they'll be upstairs while I'm shooting a live show. I would get that information that, you know, our little chip or flash card we had at the time and send that up to people. And they would actually go print pictures of the show, print them out, frame them, have them in the green room and ready for the, the stars. Before they get off the stage, when they walk in the green room, we have framed photos waiting for them. And they're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. These are pictures of what we just did on stage. I'm like, yeah, that's right. This is this is real, real time stuff, right? And from that point on, it just grew really fast. From that point, people loved it. They didn't believe it at first, but now now they get it. You was way ahead of the time. Yeah, way ahead. Yes, I'm yeah. So like light years ahead of the, of the time and dealing with it. I mean, having the photo ready. Yeah. They get off the stage. That yeah. was unheard. Of in unheard. The early, that was unheard of. That was like so, just unheard of because no one was doing that. It, it was common practice that you're gonna have to wait at least about two to three weeks. Maybe that's four. right. <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna see the photos until no. about four weeks later, and then that's you right. hope to get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. You had to wait for the contact sheet. Then they didn't they have to circle that one. Then you have to take it back to the lab and get it printed. Right? Yeah, yeah. So wow. So the fact that you were so innovative and you was a fourth runner in bringing this to the um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and really ushering them into a new era. They they didn't quite get it no. at the time, but now in 2023, they was like. That Neil Hamilton, he was on the summit in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're saying that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're saying that because I guarantee they're duplicating what you what you did for the artist now because that was revolutionary to, to, to be because when you think about the camera, it has been through a transition over the decades, over time, and the fact that oh, you yeah. was able to do that when we was just happy with the Polaroid camera. Right. <laughs> <Polaroid>. <laughs> <laughs> with the Polaroid. Yeah. You know, in the 90s, I mean, I had me a little Polaroid. I thought I was something else. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> and don't get me on the, if you had a Kodak share, you just thought right. you was doing something. Right. The fact that you was innovative with having the digital uh, camera and also utilizing it and it, introducing little Richie to it. He wanted to get the best side of it and, and just carrying on the experience of concerts and music and all of that. I mean, wow, what history, what, what history. So what we're going to do, I am going to, I would like to show the uh, studio audience this amazing, amazing cover of yours truly, our amazing Neil Hamilton right here you guys. And could you tell us a little bit about what this magazine cover is about and who decided to develop it? And look at you. I mean, you on the cover. So what's going on with this? Yeah, yeah I got a call from the owner of the organization, uh, Women in Jazz. Her name is Joan Cartwright, and she runs this organization and, and has over 400 members around the world. And it was uh, it, not that I would say it's timely, but we had just lost Wayne Shorter you know, probably a week just before, a week or two before this magazine came out. 
And I and she called me and I said, uh, Joan, she wanted some of my art, but I said, Joan, maybe let's let's put Wayne Short on there because you know Wayne Short was so huge in jazz. I mean, he pretty much played with everybody there is in the jazz world, right? <laughs> so it made perfect sense to have him on the cover. She's like, Oh God, yes, please send me the image right now. We're gonna get it up. We're gonna get it laid out, and it's gonna be on a magazine. And there it is. So that just came out probably like a week and a half ago, maybe. So that's still pretty fresh. And people have been pretty happy seeing Wayne, their beloved Wayne Shorter on the cover of Music Man magazine. Wow, that is amazing. And then all of the, what he contributed to music in general. And, um, Big time, yeah. And, and like to have, to be a part, you, you literally, it's always someone that's in the center that is, I call the connector of many different wonderful things. Right. Right. And when I think of you, I think of you as being a connector because of the fact here you are in the center and then you're with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you're a photographer, you're an artist, you're connecting with all of these amazing people. Then you take it full circle and create this art that actually transitions and transcends the emotion and the feel of what the artist was singing in the music. Yes. Like, Yes, you I, get it. It's just, it's just, it's just all the way around full circle. I don't know anyone that is a photographer or anyone that is an artist per se that actually does it the way that you do it. You're the first person that I ever met that covers all of those areas of artistry. I, I need to Google that. I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I need to it because I don't think it's anyone that is a photographer, an artist that actually worked with the uh, uh, Hall of uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, that actually brought in um, usher in a new innovative tool with digital fo photography before people start making it popular. You was using before it was popular. It might be, and it's a, it was a perfect moment. That's what's so good about it. Like I said, now looking back on it, you know, at the time, I'm just trying to stay in the game, you know. Yeah, but I'm always thinking ahead, like you said. And usually when you're thinking ahead, you you meet a lot of opposition. A lot of people don't believe in you when you have a new idea, right? And I've, I've started to realize it doesn't matter if it's you, me, or anybody. You come up with a, a really good idea. It almost takes five years before people catch up to your idea, okay? No, really. And and you got to fight everybody. It's like, ah! And I'm like, no, I'm going to do this because, you know, in your in your heart and soul that this is the thing to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was going to it was going to be the thing to do. And it was going to change everything for us, make our lives easier, be able to put our message out. You know, like I said, to the magazines instantaneously. And then even when I was stepping down from there, the art, nobody expected that part. That's the part that, they, like you said, messes with everybody's head. Either you're a photographer or either you're an artist. It's rare that you're both. Right. And yeah. that. Yeah, I was able to throw a nice curveball in there and people were like, my God, you're an artist. And they didn't really realize that. They did not know that I was a highly trained artist because I was an artist first. Photography, like I said, was a secondary. So here we are. Wow, that is incredible. So can you tell us about any upcoming projects or anything that you're doing or any collaborations that you're excited about or art shows, perhaps, that you have to um, feature some of your art? Well, music? basically... Yeah, Tina, basically, I do work with a guy, David B. Lyle, who, who's a good friend of mine now, who we are collaborating with. So we have come up with a, a unique way of taking my artwork, and he is actually a professional photographer, architectural photographer. And he has found a u very unique, unique way of merging his phot photography with my art. It's on my website listed under custom. There's a few images in there that are listed under custom. Those are actually photography and my art mer merging together. Okay, so we're like, hey, you know, we like this. This looks pretty cool. And this is not Photoshop stuff and filters and all this. This is real photography layered with my, yeah, like that LeBron James or that Jimi Hendrix. Those are collaboration pieces, for instance. Okay, see that Jimi Hendrix there with all the colors and the peace sign and stuff? No, the one in the middle, the one in the middle, right oh, there. Okay. Yeah, that's a collaboration with me and my partner, David. So we're like, oh man, this is looking pretty cool. Cause you, like I said, one thing about artists, we gotta always, or musicians, you gotta always take it to the next level, right? We, we get bored with ourselves and we're like, oh man, we gotta do something new, right? So exactly. that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing now. 
And from there, I'm not having shows right now. I'm spending more time now trying to learn kind of your world, you know, talk, you know, the, the, the social media world, because that's the way to really start to, you know, get your message out there in a different way. So that's what I want to focus on right now. I'll get back to doing the show soon because I have a show mapped out of my head that's going to be called Show Out Loud, where mm -hmm. we can take we can take this imagery maybe and do laser projectional work. You know, they, they, they've been doing that a little bit lately in the last few years, but I thought about that two years ago. But now the technology has finally caught up where I can finally get in there and say, let's project this stuff and do a musical DJ show where the DJ is playing the music of these artists while we project it on the walls and while we have a whole big fun paint and sip show, but I'm going to combine it all where it's a show that nobody's ever seen before. Listen, well, y'all heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't done it yet, but uh, that's the idea, you know? But. You know, well, well, it's already out there, so you're going to do it now. Um, yes. That is an amazing idea, and you're just one of those people that is consistently um, raising the bar and innovative and pushing uh, the needle, so to speak, on what can be done. And like you said, when you are a person that's innovative, when you're a person that is light years ahead of your uh, constituents, people, some it's it does. It's not met with congratulations. It's met no. with um, no, you can't do that. What do you mean? <laughs> right, that, right. That, like, uh, but then after it's done, they're like, yeah, I believe in you all the time. Like mm. exactly, exactly. I remember. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know the story. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that you, I really appreciate that you share with our audience about even when you are ahead of your time, you and you know this is something that you're supposed to be doing, regardless if it's art, music, podcasting, being an author, whatever it is, a singer. If you know that you're doing something that's different and innovative, um, and no one is supporting you, but you know it's something that you're supposed to be doing. Keep doing it anyway, because they will catch up. They can't catch. They can't see the vision because the vision wasn't given to them. There it is, and they, and they can't understand it. No, and that's, and Tina, that's that's a key point. Like I said, you know, you don't. I don't come at it like it was with arrogance or anything. Like I said, when the spirit talks to you, it talks to you, right? And that's what happened. That day when my, like I said, when my house burned down and I was at my lowest point in life, the spirit said, pick up that canvas and paint again. And I'm looking at him like, hey, God, I don't have no paintbrushes. What am I supposed to do? He said, I don't care. Paint. <laughs> and I created this lovely series out of that moment. You know, OK, so once again, I want to tell people, like you said, it's your lowest moment. You don't ever give up. You go. The spirit is showing you a different angle, something that you didn't see. Right. It'd be mm -hmm. too easy for me to do it with all the best tools and everybody supporting me. And that's too easy, right? I think exactly. the great stuff comes when it's hard for you, okay? And I agree. And even though we don't like the hard, but no, we after, do not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do not. After, after we get to the, you know, like the end of the rainbow, so to speak, we see. And other people see. And most importantly, it is proven to oneself because sometimes when you go through the process of it, when you are ahead of your time, it's not easy. And sometimes mm. you may get in a situation where you doubt yourself, but right. something in you push you forward. That's right. And so to see all of this, and I get it, I get it, I get Thank it. Like when I your art, I get it. I'm like, wow, like you were way ahead of your time, like, like way, way ahead. So the fact that you're seeing everything now going full circle, digital cameras right now is the only type. And now you realize yeah. like, hey, hey, I got to get up on this social media because. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I need, I need a new angle now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, running into people we ran into today with Sheree and all this and yourself. I mean, this is tremendous right now. So I know this, this is even ordained. Because I was kind of lost. I mean, I'm trying to learn it, but you know, it gets a little harder for some of us who are not grown up with it, right? So I'm like, I'm I'm a step away. I got everything else ready, but I need to learn this. And then all of a sudden, look how the sky opens up and what just happened here today. I would I woke up this morning. I had no idea this would be happening today. Well, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, well, I'm happy that it did because um, because you just gave me uh, just 
some more hope, some more just just it's just been a pleasure sharing, hearing you share your story and taking us on your journey of all the different things that you have accomplished and the fact that you're not stopping here, which mm. is amazing. And so let me give some attention to our live studio audience because I see you guys, you comment. We can't pop up every single one, but we're going to pop up a couple of them. So we're going to have, let's see, uh, we have back in homie. He said, welcome back. I'm just tuning in. Welcome back to the show. And he also said the Tina Ramos show, one of my favorite 2023. Oh, now that's just sweet. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in. You guys, make sure to like, follow, share, and subscribe. And last, but surely is not least, this is the amazing Neil Hamilton. He is the CEO of Paint Out Loud LLC. He is doing some revolutionary things in regards to the art world. Oh, Tina Turner. <laughs> so we, just lost, we just lost Tina. That's a big one. So everybody's been after this piece, which you can get on my website on different materials and different sizes at www.neilhamilton.com. So you can own this too. And that's what my biggest goal too. It's not just that I enjoy it. I want other people to own this. And when they see it hanging on their walls, then they get it. When they walk in their living room or their, their music room, they go, oh, my God, I love this art. I will remember and cherish this person forever. And Tina's one of those people amongst so many that we will cherish her forever. Forever, you guys go to www.neilhamilton.com. I am going to show it to you one more time so that you, you can see some of his amazing artwork that he has already have on his website that you can actually uh, go and purchase on today and pick the art that resonates with you. Everyone has a reason why a certain piece of art resonates with your soul. Cause actually art really touched the soul. It touched one spirit. Yeah. Yes. Just like music, music and art goes hand in hand. Yes. And so pick the art piece that brings you to your happy place. That every time you look at it, like Ray Charles in the back, you can't you cannot tell me that you can when you look at that Ray Charles painting that you're not gonna smile. I right. mean, you just you cannot help you can have a bad day and you're gonna look up and you're just gonna start grinning because it exudes happiness. <laughs> so if you yes, need some you. Happy, if you need some happy in your life, get yes. some Neil Hamilton's um, art. Like he said before, it's neilhamilton.com. Make sure to uh, support and stay in the know. You can follow him on all social media platforms because he up in this doing this social media thing. So let's help him along the way by just clicking that, <laughs> follow, button, clicking that follow and that subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I need some help. Yeah. All right. So, Neil, I want to thank you so much for uh, stopping on by the Tina Ramsey Show powered by CTR Media Network. It has indeed been a pleasure speaking with you today. And thank you for sharing your story, your art and everything that you did to revolutionize the way that we see art and your unique spin on the art world, connecting it with the beautiful industry of music and creating some masterpieces out of pretty much nothing. <laughs> Pretty much nothing. <laughs> and and Tina, I am so grateful for you and Sheree and who set who set this up. This is big for me. This is so exciting. And that gives me the motivation now to go home and start to think about the new stuff I'm gonna do instead of thinking about something that's hard or or sad. It's like now, oh, I'm all energized again. You know, so when you know, and that's all us artists need. All the artists out here do amazing work, a lot of them. They just need the support and people to get behind them and say, Your work is worth us purchasing, your work is worth us having up on our walls or on our t shirts or whatever. Let's get back out there and support the people, like you said, who do make us smile because there's too many people out here that do not make us smile. Okay, so let's tell the truth here without art, without music, we all be in some trouble for real, and that's just right. Fact. That's just facts at the end of the day. Like music plays, think about it. Music is inside of everything that we do. That's right. It's, it's into weddings. It's into having a baby. It's into happy moments. It's into movies. It's into books when you have everything. audio. Lit you cannot do anything without music and art. There it is. Music and art. And then we add the words to it to make it come to life to tell the story. But tell the story, yes. Art. And so 
I love it. Like I said, I, I'm a, just a little mini art thespian. I love art, right? I just, I just <laughs> love everything about art. And then when you attach music to it, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> the best of both worlds. So Neil, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to keep us connected with everything that you're doing because we love to stay in contact with our guests so that we can support you on these, you know, since now you on these social media streets now, we want to support you. <laughs> thank you so much, Tina. Thank you so much. And, and thank you to your audience that's watching. And like I said, I'm energized now, so I got to go home and start to map out all the new stars I'm going to paint. So we got much more to come, my dear. Oh, I'm excited. And I can't wait till you show us what that is because we're following you, CT Army and Network and the Tina Ram Show following you. So when you post on that IG, we'll see. <laughs> all right. Thank you, baby. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Listen, everyone, wasn't that an amazing interview? I want you guys to make sure that you go to neilhamilton.net. Let me pop it up again. Pop it up again for you guys so you won't be saying, you know, you don't know when I say it. NeilHamilton.com. For those of you that's going to be listening on radio and podcasting later, that is spelled N-E-A-L-H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N.com. Again, that spelling is N-E-A-L-H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N.com. For our listeners on podcast and radio, make sure to go check that out and buy you a piece of art today. And for all of you that are watching as well on Roku and all the other platforms on social media, make sure that you hop on over to his website, check out his art and purchase a piece of his art as well. Because remember, art, music can change lives. We doing the part of art and music that actually change life for the positive. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Tina Ramlin Show. And thank you everyone that's in our live studio audience. Yes, he said, wow, wow, great words. You can't do uh, without music and art. And yeah, we can't do without music and art. That's point blank. So thank you guys. And thank you for the live studio audience for tuning in. Remember, if no one told you this on today, that they love you and that you are worthy and that you are special, then I want you to know that I love you and the Tina Ramsey Show, we got your back. So until next time, you know what I'm going to say. I want you to what? I want you to keep smiling. We'll see you next time with another featured guest coming back to back tonight. Ooh, I'll see you later. Bye. Well, you have any closing remarks before we head out? Y'all, please support the movement of CTR Media Network. I'm telling you, being a part of this amazing media family, you, I, I can't go wrong, right? When they have the support, they support us in all that we do. When we have questions, they need a time out to advise and mentor. Uh, so definitely check out the different plethora of shows that are on the network. I promise you, I promise you, and I'm not saying this because I'm part of the family, but I promise you, you will be uplifted, inspired, educated, motivated, all the good stuff that we all need to carry ourselves out through the day. So definitely go check it out, y'all. Awesome. I, I definitely appreciate you. Definitely appreciate it. Hello, I am going to say I absolutely loved being on the Tina Ramsey show. Um, her ability to be able to ask questions, her ability to be able to showcase a female, her, her professionalism, the communication, the razzmatazz of the entire um, outlook here on the podcast was absolutely phenomenal. And I'm honestly going to give her a 10 out of 10 when it comes to um, her podcasting skills. And I can say this with a lot of backing because I've been on over a hundred podcasts and I'm telling you, she's a one in my book for sure.